the day does feel like a big football day in New York. Why? Because there was a GQ interview with Baker Mayfield in which he was quoted as saying that he, quote, cannot believe the Giants picked Jones six overall and that it, quote, blows his mind. After uh, the writer, Clay Skipper, told Mayfield it seemed that scouts can't accurately, accurately predict who will be a good quarterback, Mayfield is, forget it, you've got to win, and then goes on to say a player has, quote, a history of winning and being that guy for your team, or you don't, implying that Daniel Jones' 17-19 and 19 record at Duke doesn't make him really a capable winner. Mayfield, though, then jumped on an Instagram post later today and said, this is not what I said. Just so we're clear, I also said I was surprised I got drafted number one. Then was talking about the flaws in evaluating quarterbacks where I brought up winning being important. Reporters and media will do anything to come up with a clickbait story. Heard nothing but good things and wish nothing but the best for Daniel. Um, of course, people still got very excited. For the sake of argument, I'm not saying I don't believe Baker's uh, walk back. Maybe it is true. I don't know. Um, writers often who are writing a story in which it's a feature like that, um, they don't have to go face the guy again the next day. So if they take it a little bit out of context, it's not the same as when you were covering the Knicks and you'd have to walk into the locker the room the day. next day. Right. So you never know. That could be slightly out of context. I'm willing to guess the truth is somewhere in the middle. He probably did say some other nice things about Jones that didn't get included because they weren't interesting. And he probably did say, I can't believe they picked him that high. And guess what? Is that a big surprise? What, because of a couple of series in the preseason? Everyone now goes, oh, of course you should have picked him that high? We're just changing the story right away? Why are people surprised by this? I don't think it should be a surprise. What we're surprised is that Baker Mayfield is that guy. Where Why he, would you be, be surprised by that? I'm not, what I'm saying is, is that the surprise is him saying something like that about a, a, another player in the league when you haven't reached a status that... Look, look, Baker has a lot to say. I think we've learned that about him. We, learned, we knew that about him when he played in college. And he clearly believes that the world needs to hear everything he has to say. He has an opinion, and he's not afraid to share it. This used to be a, you know, he's got a chip on his shoulder. Um, he's, you know, a small-town kid who nobody believed in, always going to have to defy the odds. There's something about, you know, what makes, him, what makes him like this is what makes him good. But now we've kind of reached a point of arrogance, I think, with him, where he'll say anything. And that might, might have been a moment where, as I think it was described, he's with the writer. There was something on SportsCenter, and mm -hmm. it inspired him just to... He wasn't asked about Daniel Jones. Like, let's make that clear. It wasn't as if he was asked directly, what do you think of Daniel Jones? He saw him on SportsCenter, and then just kind of off the cuff was like, I can't believe they drafted him. Right. You know, and that sort of was a reaction. And the writer probably was like, well, there's some gold. Right. And took it. And knew, of course, because it's New York... It's going to catch fire as it has. And it also gets the story, the click that it, it, you want it to get. But this all comes back to Baker, though. And that's the awareness of probably not something you need to be saying. But he has an opinion on things, and he's not afraid to share them. In fact, I think he believes that people want his opinion. Not people only that. People want to know what he's thinking. But the we game, all know he's got a lot of nozzle in him, too. Of course. Come but, on. But that's my point. Right. So we could play this game, though, however, and I'm curious, again, from the fans... Uh, who are upset about this at 800 3776 is how many of them now want to take on Baker Mayfield? How dare you say that about a rookie quarterback? Because I think we can play this game called Who Said It? And we can use a quote like, I can't believe they drafted him uh, that high. And then choice A is, Baker Mayfield said this. Choice B is, most Giants fans said this. Choice C, all of the above. Exactly. I'll go all of the above. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, so... You know, let's not be stunned that something like this was said. What I'm kind of taken aback by is a guy going into his second year has a lot to say and not necessarily has a lot of a lot accomplished yet. So that's the stuff I think people warn you about. It's the karma thing. It's like, you, you know, worry about your own game. There's enough there to keep you busy. Now, uh, Freddie Kitchens weighed in. Oh. Head coach in Cleveland, first oh, year. Why not? Let's hear from Coach. No, I don't have any comments. It's I think you probably need to go back and look. And, you know, he's got the ability to, to decide whatever he wants. But that was during the draft when that was going on. I mean, he's a football fan also. So 
I don't really have any comment for it. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't. So uh, no, I think it's nothing did. against Daniel Jones. It's just he was talking. You know. I, I think he did have something to say about it, though. He was also asked if the Browns' bullseye is growing. <laughs> we don't care. We don't care. All right, it's already on there, so it doesn't matter. We'll be ready to play. I don't know what a bullseye is. I don't know what that is. Does anybody know? Does anybody know what a bullseye is? If they're not trying to beat our and we're not trying to beat their I don't know what else you do. Because that's what we're going to try to do. Hopefully they try to do the same. I'm going to tell you one thing now. That's no. Coach me, Coach Kitchens. I already made a guarantee. If anyone runs their mouth in this locker room and talks to the media, I said I was going to kill them. And now i got to kill somebody. Who's it going to be? Who wants to tangle with old Freddie Kane? <laughs> There's something about Freddie Kitchens that is just wild, crazy man. He's one notch away from killing somebody. He does sound like he's wearing a cowboy hat when he's speaking. He, it's, it's, there's just something I very... I don't know. What's a bullseye? What's, what a bullseye? what's a bullseye? Only bullseye sees right in your face. <laughs> now I'm going to take these pants off. Coach, coach, hey, calm down. Easy. He, coach. He, uh, he does sound a little triggered, doesn't he? He does. Like all of a sudden, he's probably like, annoyed do you by feel it? there's a bullseye on your team? Why? Why would there be a bullseye? What Why is wouldn't a bullseye? there be a bullseye? Like, he got real triggered real fast about that, which, again, suggests that this bothers him. If somebody said, do you think there's a bullseye on your team, and he just was like, oh, I would hope so. You know, just kind of plainly just says it. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm, there's a bullseye have, on everyone's every team. Every team we're playing this year, we have a bullseye on them. But he sounded triggered by it. This is good. Look, this Browns thing is interesting. Besides the fact that th those guys, especially Odell, and we'll get to that in a minute, can't stop talking about the Giants and can't stop talking about New York, I, I feel like this, this Browns season which seems to have a lot of, there's a lot of um, interest in this team because, A, the franchise has been epically bad for so long that Baker is an outspoken quarterback who's a Heisman winner who played well, and then you add Odell to the mix. And there's a lot of anticipation for this team, but I wonder if this is going to be one of those things where they, they are compelling to a point where they might be more compelling if this whole thing just blows up on them. Because there's a lot of emotions and a lot of egos being crammed into this team and now a lot of attention. And when there's a lot of attention and emotion and egos, put that into a, a, into a drink, it's toxic. So, so that's the second thing I'll ask everyone is expectations for the Cleveland Browns. Do you think they're going to win the AFC North? And there will be. You make a really good point. I mean, Baker Mayfield talks a lot. And last year things went really well. They had zero expectation. Exactly. And they exceeded them all. Easy to talk. They were 7, 8, and 1. They easily could have been 9 and 7. Um, they, they were, there were a couple games they lost heartbreakingly, bad field goal kicking, et cetera. So they had no expectations. They exceeded them all. Remember, they fire the coach, and then he starts making face, right? Like he and Hugh had that uh, altercation, or not really an altercation. But he, right. He was calling him out, again, a rookie, and he's being brash. There's this year's different. This year, it's all expectations. There's something about it. Like, you could argue, I, like, you want athletes who are personable, who have personality, who are willing to say things instead of being boring. Like, what was Daniel Jones' reaction to what Baker Mayfield said? Quote, I think he's a great player. He can throw it, and I enjoy watching him play. I know. That's a direct quote. You know, so do I you, think he's a great you prefer player. that? He can throw it. Or someone that's got, you know. I enjoy there's, watching there's, him there's play. Some, you know, there's some entertainment to this player. But there's also something to be said about speaking up too soon. You and I talked uh, the other day about something that wasn't sports-related, and it's sort of like when you're young and you're a fast riser, you still have to show some humility. It's still very important to show some humility and not, not walk in and look at the, the generation ahead of you and say, you guys don't know what you're doing. We're here to clean up your mess. Like, don't, you know, don't start acting like that. And I think Baker's got a lot of that in him where he's got a lot to say and he feels like everybody wants to hear it.